Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. The 24 colon 45 hours new year shift. Status has been changed to won't fix. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. The 24 colon 45 hours new year shift. To my knowledge, I'm the only one crazy enough to have tried this, but I needed money. Who doesn't? Union rules for overtime are pretty generous, especially on holidays. The standard practice when you want to score some quick money is work a double shift on a holiday. You start paid double time, but soon move to triple time, and we like to call the last five hours, quad damage. That's 56 hours of regular pay for 16 hours work. Back then, logistics already tried to ensure that nobody ended up working more than 16 hours in a row, as every continuous hour beyond 16 would still be at 400% pay. They scheduled shifts in ways where taking more than two within the same job was impossible. But I knew the union rules a little too well. Back then I'm already senior staff, and I have a pretty decent hourly wage for the time. Quad damage makes me salivate. I hatch a little plot to get more of it. As senior staff, we're closed at night and I'm not allowed to do the work of a frontline employee, as per the work contract. There is one exception. If overtime shifts are open and everyone who wants one got it, and there's still need for more, before they start forcing people who don't want an OT shift by reverse seniority, they need to accept the OT applications of anyone with the required skills and training, essentially another union employee who already did the job. This is buried so deep everyone forgot. I first apply for a frontline night shift from midnight to 8 a.m. A confused low-level suit tells me I can't apply on frontline shifts as senior staff, and I explain the work contract clause. He drones off to check with his overlords at HR, who eventually grant that I'm entitled to apply, but will only get it if there's a shortage of frontline volunteers. Then, once I got that in writing, I send in my application for two senior staff shifts from 8 to midnight, which I'm pretty sure I'll get. Back then, they put overtime applications in an open database everyone could see. As the deadline for New Year's OT applications nears, I do the math. There's exactly the right amount of frontline applicants for the night shift versus the open slots. I go see one of them, he applied on night shift because that's his usual schedule, but asked for a single shift. I ask why he's not taking a double, he doesn't feel like it. Okay. Slash you slash bite wave. Since you're only working one anyway, will $40 convince you to move your application to a 8 to 16 slot? The frontline guy thinks he got lucky, free money, promptly changes his application, doesn't ask questions. Now they're one short for the night shift, and they already published the slots, too late to go back. I wait for confirmations to come in. I'm scheduled night shift frontline 8 hours, then senior staff 16 hours. Even in China they don't work you like this, but it's okay. I will sleep late on the 31st, and I have 3 days off afterwards to rest up. I add up the numbers. This 24-hour shift is worth the equivalent of 88 regular work hours. I use a sleep aid to ensure I get 12 hours sleep beforehand doesn't work perfectly I get up a little earlier than I wanted, but whatever, I eat and head to the office. Haven't spoken to customers in a while, but I figure the early hours of New Year's will be quiet. Since they staffed us minimally to slash OT costs, there's a few more calls than I expected. Some drunken callers, one guy who wanted me to teach him how to torrent movies had a guy who complains about a 5 minutes outage at 5 am, but mostly I save my energy. On overtime, we also get longer paid breaks, 30 minutes periodically instead of 15, in addition to meal times. I'm not tired enough to sleep yet. I pass around some dark chocolates to co-workers at dawn and check on my stash of balls guarana, my wake-up drug of choice at the time, which had a key role to play later that day. Soon, I can finally ditch the front line and go upstairs to my senior desk and start doing my real job. Triple time has already kicked in. Work is slow. Some tickets, lots of time in between calls, I browse dig, it was still a thing, and I get a little drowsy. 
I set up a little timer with the time left till midnight for courage. Another senior working OT joins me. Quad damage kicks in, motivating me to keep going. I sort of sleep for half an hour on my next union break in a closed, quiet room relying on a then, fancy phone with an alarm to wake me up. It works, I feel slightly refreshed, go back to manning the lines. Lots of stupid questions, they have a lot of contractors working the holidays to cut down on OT pay. Mid-afternoon, another break, I decide after this one I'll be able to start hitting the balls, I'm tired by now. I go to the enclosed room, lean back on a chair, put my feet up on another. It's about 14.30, I set up the alarm and doze off. Maybe I was tired and F asterisk kept it up, or the phone was a POS, we'll never know. When I wake up, I feel much better, why am I not tired? I take the phone, it's a hair to 1700 hours. I slept two hours past the end of my break, on quad damage. OSH asterisk T. I brush my hair real quick, unwrinkle my shirt, and carefully go back to senior's floor at a slow, casual pace. Maybe I can salvage this. Two of my colleagues are up there, of course no boss on holidays. One of them waves me over. Frank, bite wave. The hell were you? Thank God it's dead, I punched you back and flagged as dealing with tickets and mail, the loan suit down there didn't come up. Amelia, better actually shuffle some tickets around and hope nobody looks at timestamps too closely. I've been taking your calls, you're buying my dinner. I breathe a sigh of relief. Slash you slash bite wave, hey, you know I'm buying you dinner whenever you want I joke you guys are the best, whatever you wanna eat, all the balls you can drink tonight. I'm sorry. I fell asleep at the switch, literally. Amelia laughs and says she discreetly poked around but didn't know where I was hiding. Obviously the door was locked. We agree to keep the most highly paid nap I ever took on the DL, and I busy myself with tickets while simultaneously taking calls. After half an hour of being a busy bee, I'm fairly convinced I've done enough to create the illusion of a productive if lazy afternoon stats-wise. I order a big lunch. I really love my co-workers. Senior staff always had each other's backs. The adrenaline from this whole thing has me alert, and the rest of the evening goes by swimmingly, until about an hour to midnight where I'm really tired again. But I soldier on, micro-sleeping in my chair. No calls at this hour, all paperwork dealt with. Until I'm almost ready to disconnect at 23.57 and Slash you slash bite wave, zz. Ah. Uh. Senior line, bite wave. You may send me your ticket. As luck would have it, it's a problem I have to escalate to networks. They're in between shifts, I get lengthy hold music. At least the quad damage is still in effect. I was so drowsy, I can't recall exactly what the problem was, but I know it kept me there till 0045 when I finally punched out adding another three hours of regular pay to my finally tally. I didn't even bother cleaning up the bottles and the dinner leftovers, didn't power down the station. I stumbled in the stairs going down to the main floor. Everyone was gone except the new night shift. I dragged Maya's home and passed out face deep in pillows, still half clothed. I came to the conclusion that while this was really nice on the next payslip, I wasn't really built for that kind of stunt. But when I came back the next week, the story of how I was the first guy ever to find a way to get paid for nearly 14 hours of quad damage had gone around and I had a minute of glory. The manager handling the pay slips looked at me with a mix of grudging admiration and a you thieving bastard vibe. I smiled. The accidental nap remained a secret. They later found a way to close my loophole on health and safety grounds. The most you can work is 16 hours in a row now, and honestly, it may not be nearly as good money, but it's probably the most that should be allowed by law. Somewhere in some box, I kept that payslip to this day. All of ByteWave's tales on TFTS. <laughs> Status has been changed to won't fix. I'm at work, browsing Reddit while vaguely keeping an eye out for incoming tickets when I see something very rare a status update in a ticket from our TV software engineers. 
These people are swamped with work hammering out countless bugs on our set-top boxes, they very rarely have the time to handle tickets. One of the more useless features we offer is a package of games you can play with your TV remote. Only really young kids or very old desperate people who can't work a computer tend to subscribe to that. The games are designed out of house, so when they have bugs we escalate them to the outside firms which design them. I look at the ticket. It's over three years old. Apparently one of our games has a showstopper on level 91, reported by a single user, and 78 years old woman whom I gratuitously mentally picture as a mildly alcoholic cat lady who plays TV games all day. It was escalated outside in 2010, sat out of house nearly a year before they told us her issue could not be reproduced. Then someone in house used cheats to get to level 91 in this game, which is apparently a nearly superhuman feat, and reproduced the bug, and we sent it back. Six months later they reply saying it works fine on their STBs, and the problem appears specific to ours. So since it's specific to our boxes, off it went to STB engineering, the great void from which no low severity issue ever returns. We assumed we'd never hear of it again, but there it is, an update, just 18 months later. STB engineering? Only one report? Contact customer to confirm if issue ongoing. I open her call history and see she called two weeks ago to complain about it. In fact she called about every three months for the last three years about not being able to get past level 91. I search the database, no other reports on this. I open her billing account only to notice it was just closed a week ago. Did she unsubscribe over level 91? I look at the notes from CSR. CSR, customer deceased as of X slash X slash X, billing, account and service closure effective immediately. Service call plan to recuperate rented hardware. I go back to the ticket system. Slash you slash byte wave, issue still exists, as confirmed two weeks ago by customer, and it was reproduced in-house previously to confirm. Customer has since passed, but if you have a fix ready, would prevent future calls. Obviously there's no answer, as we've established these guys have a very casual relationship with the ticket system. About 8 months later, I get an alert, given I subscribe to the ticket. STB Engineering, Status Change TO, Won't Fix. Explanation of Resolution, Customer Died. Reason Ticket was solved outside slot timetable. All of ByteWave's tales on TFTS.